Okay, friends, so here, here, we're out again. Uh, Ron, I've worked for many, many times. Great guy, phones me up when, when, when there's issues. So I, I wanna share something with you, friends. You guys hear me talk about root rot all the time, okay? Well, I'm gonna show you something here now. This is what we call a green snag. You look at the tree, anyone who's not kind of savvy about this type of thing, I wanna show you, look at, okay. This tree just blew down. This one here we're looking at, it just blew down. But the interesting thing about this tree, you don't, need, you don't need to be a brain scientist to see this. Look at this, friends. It's mush. Now this is right in the tree, look. Look at that. It's completely rotten. There's no even roots hanging off the side. This thing just blew over, friends. Look at it. It just blew over. It's like a ball. That's what you call a root ball. Now, there's just nothing left of it. Now look at this. So there's a little, a little ball. Now you'll notice the root rod will come up in the, so this is where you have to read the stump, Sonny, for root rod, okay? Th these all got it. Now friends, I know I get all excited about this stuff, you guys know me, but this is important stuff. So there it is. Little contorted in the stump. So when you're looking for root rot and disease, it's not all about the, the, the indicators or your mushrooms are your main indicators, but they're not here, friends. So now, we have to go around. So my point being is that as we walk up this tree, look at it. It's healthy. It's got a full crown in it. Look at these limbs. Here's the foliage. Beautiful foliage on it. Beautiful green foliage. It's a green snag, friends. Root rot. It's everywhere. Look at it. Beautiful tree. Goes all the way up. Full crown. Full crown completely. Now the other thing you can look for is mushrooms around the stump, like around the ground. You look for mushrooms. This one here's got it. That one's definitely got it. That that tree's rotten for sure. They've almost been marked with something. I wonder what this is. Yeah, I asked that when I bought the property, but nobody seemed to know. Yeah, oh that that's definitely got root rot. It's uh, it's big time in here. But but it's a yeah, see look at that one again. There's a but anyway, I don't want to start picking apart the forest. We're far away enough Ron, from the house here that Yeah, we're kind of far enough from and we are, you're right. It's not gonna club anybody. Yeah, it looks like he's got a couple hanging up over there or something here, up in the little, little. Yeah, it's your property lines. Yeah. Root rot. This area is uh, really got it bad. And we've known this, and, and these are indicators too, friends. This is all indicators of root rot, already pre-existing trees that are down. Right oh, that's the line there, Ron. Okay, yeah. And they logged and put a house, and this comes off wearing, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so here we are again. Here, here's another tree with a crown in it and another one. Same deal, friends. No root system on it. Look, none. You see? Root rot. Over and out. Lots of root rot, friends. Lots of root rot. So here's your indicator, your most dominant indicator of root rot on fir trees is right here. The foliage, it looks thin, as you can see, it is. It's just thin, okay? But this is your indicator right here, right there, okay? There's no reason. They, they, they don't grow on solid trees. Look at it, it's all the way up. See them? See them there? This, this, is, this, this, this tree's rotten, okay? It's got root rot, okay? And the only place for it is right towards the shop. It'll fit but he's probably not going to take this tree today. All right. Hey, friends, how we doing? Yeah, morning. Uh, we're on a property this morning. Um, oh, 10 minutes from my house. Not even sunny, eh? So anyhow, uh, we got root rot issues here. I've just been roaming through here uh, for the last eight to 10 years do doing tree work in here uh, for this gentleman. He built a beautiful little cabin. Actually, there's a video on the channel where I, I nip one from up here right down towards the house. It was a hundred footer. I measured it and it come in. Some of you may remember the video, friends, when I show you the house. Remember this one? And I slipped it right in there and I measured it and, uh, and it, was, it was a good one. I high stumped it off the Mer Merc tailgate right over there.
It was a good, it was fun. It was a good one. Uh, regardless. Anyway, we've got, we got some trees to cut down. But, not yesterday. It was a few days ago. Don Walker, the famous Donnie Walker from the Walker Saw Shop. Then I'm all British Columbia. A lot of you know who that is. Um, now, Johnny, Johnny from, from Foreshore has walkerized this Echo 620. We got a little 620 here. I don't fall with Echo saws. I just, I don't. Sonny, can you pass me that other oil, please? This one's brand new. We'll leave it for now. Thanks. Um, so I, I'm going to put this little Echo through the paces today, friends. It's a little walkerized Echo 620. And Donnie Walker's done his little magical touches to it. So he phoned me up. He says, Bakken, I got this power saw. I'd like you to give it a test run for me. So we're going to do that. It's an Echo 620. What, what are they called? CP or something? A CS620. P. PW. 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 <clears throat> CP620 PW. Power. So there it is. It's a 28 inch bar, full house chain, stock chain, which it's full house at least. I haven't touched the rakers and I won't touch the rakers. I don't know the saw yet. 620. Walkerized. Echo. Nice little saw. Victor's got one. Victor's has his walkerized by Johnnyized by the North Shore. Foreshore. Foreshore. Thanks, son. Foreshore. I think of North Shore. Uh, Foreshore in Abbotsford. If you're in Vancouver on the mainland, go see the fellas, uh, uh, Desmond and the boys and Johnny over at uh, Foreshore in Abbotsford. And they've got another store. I forget what town in Vancouver. Good guys. Burnaby, I believe. For the hot rotting of the Echoes and your topping saws. Nice dubs, eh? Nice dubs for those folks. Okay, let's get prepared. Well, Billy, uh, maybe for those three, can we do them after New Year's? These ones? Yeah. Yeah, just, let's do it. Just talk. We got lots going. and Yeah, no, I agree just, with you. And then when you come back, maybe we can just walk the perimeter of that guy's property. Yes. Where we might see something that's in the that can his go his something? way yeah sure and then, in the new year yeah yeah Pick let's do it clear Let, let's do it good idea yeah and then enjoy these over the over the winter and or, or just the next little bit because i knew they were gone and i knew i knew that they would they would go well, we got almost five years out of you know what you did well i i'm surprised really but we, we'd known that one for sure yeah we've always talked about well someday we'll have to take yeah, so it's not a shock, anyhow. We got we got trees, we got root rot rotten fir trees, friends, up all through this property. But he, after that big windstorm, he uh, he phoned us and he said, "Buck, and I heard you got an axe called Hurty. Can you come over and hurt some axes for hurt some trees for us?" <laughs> this is a sweet axe, friends. Thirty-two inch handle. We're gonna go crack some trees over with it. I don't usually use it for that. Son, can you show them this freaking tree on the corner of the house here? This one? Yeah. This, this one here. Oh, he's dug us out here? Oh, yeah. yeah, he dug his trees out. So this thing here has got a weird wadoozy in it. It's right beside the house. Maybe take a, a spot from up top. Show them the yeah. loop in it. She's got a little... Pretty ugly stump. Yeah, and it might not be rotten, but the fact is... Is we got a little spoof. Now, what a guy would usually do, friends... She we leans in this way off the stump and then it takes a big yeah. bow out that way. I don't so, know if the friends, GoPro doesn't pick it up very well. But. No, that's true. We talk about we talk about high and low sides of trees. High side and low side, right? This is the high side of the tree as far as landscape is concerned. But as as far as the tree's concerned, this is the low side of the tree. And what I mean is the tree leans to the house that way. The house is right here, friends, okay? Right behind us. Sonny, you want to just show them that? Okay? So the tree actually has got a bow to the house. But, and the target is there. So I would be kind of foolish cutting from this side, friends. I cut from the low side because of the target. That's the only reason I'm doing that. And we're going to move this little chest. We're going to have to slide this out. got handles on her, so. Oh, will it, will it pop out the bottom is the question. It Let's might. spin it. Then. Yeah, just... Put you guys down here. Perfect. Good. We'll just spin it. Sonny, grab one handle and we'll go. Nice and easy. One more time. One, two, three, go. There we go. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. That's good. Ron, you're okay with this little guy? It looks like I might have crumped. Or is it just... That's, that's okay, whatever. Okay. Okay, so, so again, friends, the target is right behind us. I'm going to go on the low side. It's not recommended, friends, to fall on the low side. But, son, if you look at the lean from here, take a look at this, Sonny. Bring the camera in. Look at the freaking bow in this tree. Look what it's doing. Oh, it's terrible. Face the camera up there. Look at that. It just literally, it's bowing. It's actually bowing back this way, but we're not putting it this way. I'd like to put it out there. It would almost be easy for you out there, wouldn't it, Ron? Yeah. There's fences. And... Well, I gotta throw another one down below. Yeah, that's true. Because this would, this would go quite nicely this way, but you've got bird hangers and fences. No, we're going to pop it off. So we're going to have to pop it off down here, son. Right through the window there. Right through here? Yeah, we're through okay. there. I thought you'd be going down there. No, because we got that maple. So we're on the low side. We're going to give the echo a shot, friends. Make sure you got swinging power. Put the old... Go. Oh, I hunker down here, get comfy with my camera. Yeah, Hoagie's running camera. So we're gonna tap this thing. It's kind of leaning back, but the only place for it, friends, is there. We can't go up this way.
So here we are. So we have signs of root rot, not bad. It, it, it's in there, but it's definitely not bad at all. We just have so much root rot around here. We're just kind of, Ron's been so lucky. He just had one come out the back of the house. So we have some signs here, but nothing drastic. So that's good. We core sampled this, Ron, I think two years ago. And there was some in here that were okay, but this is peace of mind work, friends. Peace of mind work. Good looking stump, about a quarter of the way in the stump. Uh, they've changed the program now, which is kind of different. They, they want narrower undercuts now, a quarter instead of a third. Ugh, I, I understand why, but we've been doing thirds and, and more for a long time. But that's, that's kind of what they're looking for there, friends. Good piece of hingewood all the way across the stump. I'm level. They like you a step above right Because there's nothing I can hit. There is a cedar, but your property goes to the fence, Ron. To the fence, yeah. So huh. Be nice to get it down there for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Wow. <laughs> That's a big bang, but we're gonna do it for Ron. I just hope we're not hooked up into that maple. Worst case scenario, Ron, I might have to take that maple. Okay. But I, I shouldn't have to. In order to get this thing down there, if it's hooked in, I think it's gonna bang out. I think it's gonna bang out. Show the house and all that, Sonny. <laughs>
Whoa. That was a good call, Ron. Oh. Look at that. That's dark. I felt it right in the stump. That's dark. I felt it on my very first cut right here. Get some of the dust off there. Look at that. That was a darn good call. Yeah. I just wanted to ease it. That's rotten, rotten. <laughs> rotten, Ronnie. Well, that, that, like I said, it. So friends, that, that was just a nurse, nurse at over show. Ron, Ron mentioned that this, Ron, you said the ground was literally lifting and moving around. This way. Like, yeah, back and forth. Right. Yeah. So, so son, uh, or the, the, the root rut's crazy in here, friends. It's crazy. It's all through. We've always known it's been here. Um, but to hear, to hear that the ground was moving around just tells you that there's not a lot of root structure there. So this was a good thing. It's right beside the house, friends. Right beside the house. And he's gotten quite lucky because he's in a forest. That's the only reason a lot of these trees are working together, right, friends? They can all be sick and work together and, and hang out. But as things thin and change out, we got, you know, we got a few issues over here too we're going to deal with. But that's good. So, so Ron, you, you look like oh, you're okay with that one. Yeah, I'm good. Nothing up in the air? Pretty, pretty yeah. safe for you? Yeah. Good. Okay. Six twenty is actually doing quite nicely. There's a a, a twenty eight inch bar full house chain, friends. The thing's doing great. It's walkerized. Donnie's done a nice job. It's got nice pull. Um, we're breaking it in. It's going to open up more as we bust these saws in. After about quite a few tanks, they start to open up. This saw's starting to open up a little better even now. Uh, I like it. It's a nice little saw. I wouldn't use it all day long in wood like this. It's not quite strong enough, but it will handle this. This what is this? Some two and a half foot tree. Two and a half feet, we'll, we'll measure it after. 20 inch? Yeah, 20. Oh, for sure. It's more than that, son. I'll yeah. bet this is 24. Well, we'll see once we'll your bar's all the way in. Yeah. We'll, see. well, yeah, it's a 28 inch bar. Friends, how are we doing? I hope everybody's well. Happy New Year's to you all again. Um, just torrential here today. Absolutely torrential. We've got a, a, a ton more park work to do up in Parksville, uh, which will be going up tomorrow. Um, they're talking 500 trees down. There's stuff like it, it, it just everywhere. It's not the place for an unexperienced man. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be punished. Uh, um, it, it, it's all twisted and hung up and loaded and that's they're, they're asking they're asking for certified fallers in there is what they're asking for um, qualified men it's it's a bad spot that we call them jackpots um, so we're going up to dismantle some of that stuff um, there's stuff all over this was a bad storm but anyway uh, this last stump um, 
Yep, the battery dies. So I'm just going to walk you through the undercut and I think it all of a sudden it just ends as I go to put the back cut in. But the snag came out beautifully. This is a snag, this last tree. Uh, the little saw is nice. The, the little saw is real nice. Donnie Walker, nice job, buddy. Uh, nice little saw. Nice little saw. I wouldn't take it in doing second growth. Steady uh, on the day you'd lose it in your production at the end because the 372 or the 461 or whatever you're running uh, is is going to get it. It's it's bigger. It's bigger, and, and that's just plain and simple. So, you know, uh, when your undercuts are going in quicker and things are working quicker, at the end of the day, you're going to have you know, f let's say eight or ten more meters at the end of the day. That's a lot in logging. So, um, you know what I mean, friends. So it's going to pay in the end, but. Beautiful little saw. Love it, actually. Comfortable, nice ergonomics. Nice little saw. Nice little saw. But very nice to have it walkerized. Or, or, or ported, you know. So anyways, this last little stump, we just clean it up and then I lose power on the batteries and that. So, friends, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, we got an exciting year. Buck and stock, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. Plan your holidays. If you can make it, great. If not, well, there's always the year after. Over and out, friends. Be kind. All right, friends. In in closing, um, I'll, I'll I'll be honest. Um, the six twenty. I liked it. I did. I liked it. Um, but how I would run it if I if it was the only saw I ever had and I was stranded on a on a, on a desert island, I would have a, a grinder sent in on a plane because it needs to be in in my opinion only it's just from what I'm used to cutting and what I've used to having in my hands uh, for a saw that size it is a great little saw Donnie Walker and I know Johnny's done one for uh, uh, Johnny at, at Foreshore right son Foreshore at, at Foreshore and, he, and he's done a hell of a job they they they, they hot rod up nice um, I enjoyed running that Don Walker if you're ever watching this buddy uh, I did I enjoyed running it um, I wouldn't put anything bigger than a 28 inch bar on it. Uh, it'll it'll run it, but if you're cutting, oh, we forgot to measure that tree, but it, it was a two foot, two and a half foot tree, easy. Easily 20 inches, maybe 22, 24, you know? Yeah, now we gotta go measure it. Oh, we're not going to measure no. it. No, anyway, Fred's, uh, nice little saw, smooth. Uh, Donnie picked it up with whatever you did, Don, to that saw. It, it's nice, the runability stayed there, it, it's smooth. Did uh, you ever run Victor's before it got? I did. To, to reference? I did, but he, I didn't. I run his all the time, and that thing's definitely, uh, is it? Quite the, the bigger animal than, uh, than a stock one. It's definitely oh, bigger. yeah, yeah. Son uh, Hogan says he runs Victor's, at, uh, but now his is Walker. His I is... haven't run Victor since he got it. Oh, okay, so okay. Better. Yeah. But I know his stock compared to that one is a world of difference. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this Especially thing. Especially with the 28, because I think Victor had a 32 on his. He did. For a long time. He did. And friends, this is a, this is a stock chain. Okay, this is a stock 28 full house. So, uh, but a saw like this, 60 cc's. I mean, not second growth wood, good size second growth wood. Uh, I would definitely put a full house grind on, and I think I'm actually going to. I'm going to run it with a full house grind. I'm going to get a saw. I might pull an old one off. Uh, 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 I got one at the house actually, ground. So I'm going to throw a ground chain on it and give it a run with that, and that'll speed things up, and I'll have another report on the 620. But Don Walker, that Walker Saw Shop in Nanaimo, I've known you for a gazillion years. You guys sent me into the bush for my first time when that little bugger right there was in his mom's belly. And uh, I'll tell you something, uh, I love you guys and you guys run a great business and you've been uh, you've been with me the whole time. Uh, so that was a nice build, Don, nice build. I like it. It picked it up, didn't it, son? Oh, definitely. Hogan was bucking with it, he enjoyed it. So anyways, yeah, it's a good one. Okay, friends, over and out.